it really has been a bit of a a bit of a whirlwind 48 hours as far as Manchester United go in the transfer window. What I want to do in this video, please take 10 minutes to watch it. Watch it the whole way through and listen to it. Because I'm going to speak about Arnautovic, I'm going to speak about Rabio, I'm going to speak about Milinkovic Savic and Cody Gakpo as well, the PSV winger who Manchester United are interested in signing. Because I want to ask you in the comments to let me know what you think. Is this Manchester United executing a plan B? Or is this Manchester United merely panicking after the defeat to Brighton and what's happened since? I'm going to run through all of it. So make sure you subscribe to United People's TV, honestly. I'd love to have you as part of the community for this season. And, well, I hope he gets better than that first game. But make sure you subscribe. Hit the notification bell as well. So let's make no mistake, right, about what Manchester United's priorities still are, I would say, in this transfer window. And we know, first and foremost, that includes Frankie de Jong. We know also that Anthony, in a dream world, in a dream situation, that De Jong and Anthony would both be Manchester United players now for Eric Ten Hag. And a third name on that list was, of course, Benjamin Sesko. Now, we know for well that Sesko has now joined Red Bull Leipzig from Red Bull Salzburg. That doesn't come as too much of a surprise to anybody. But the thing that's happened since the game against Brighton has been... Yeah, it's been mad. It started with Arnautovic. It went to Rabiot. It went to Milinkovic Savic, and now it's gone to Cody Gakpo. Different names, different positions, different types of players, and not necessarily direct replacements, alternatives for the likes of De Jong and Anthony. And what I want to do in this video is I want to run through each one of these transfers now, because my opinions, yeah, I definitely got caught up in the emotion of what was a bit of a mad day yesterday. Uh... With the news of Arnautovic breaking on Sunday night, then Rabio on Monday morning, and then obviously both of those happened after the Brighton defeat. Uh, and then, wow, well, it was just, let me run through all of it, and I want to let you know my opinion. But the Arnautovic one is, for the life of me, I don't really care what anybody says, I cannot get behind that transfer. I cannot and I will not get behind the idea that Mark Arnautovic, 33-year-old Mark Arnautovic, is a good signing for Manchester United. No. That's pure panic stations. That's pure, geez, I need a striker. I need somebody else. Look, I started that game there against um, Brighton with no num fit number nine. And even if the stories are correct that he was on the list for a couple of weeks, we pulled the trigger after that game against Brighton. This is a reaction. I hope full well that Bologna's manager is going to be doing Manchester United a favour and making sure we don't sign him. Because if we're going to go making the mistake of going to try and sign him, then maybe a club can save us. I absolutely back what Eric Ten Hag wants. He doesn't want Arnautovic. But I'll tell you what he wants less than having no alternative to Ronaldo is Arnautovic. That's like forgetting your PE kit and going and finding something in the, in the bucket. Ah, that's been there for a few years. Let's brush it off. That'll do. Ah, well, I've used that before, actually. Sod that. Arnautovic, you can't tell me that that's any part of any strategy. I think the other signings we can have a conversation about. Now, my immediate reaction to this Adrian Rabio deal yesterday was one of utter perplexion. I was confused. I really didn't understand where and how Adrian Rabio fitted into any sort of long-term strategy from Manchester United. Now that I've had a little bit of time to step back, I do still stand by the fact that I... For me personally, it's not a signing I would want Manchester United to make. But I think what has become obvious is that it's a signing that Eric Ten Hag. Again, I don't think it's necessarily the signing that Eric Ten Hag wants to make. But in the grand scheme of things of having nothing or Rabio, I think this, and that's quite an easy conversation to have. As transpired here today from Fabrizio Romano saying Adrian Rabio had a direct call with Ten Hag on Monday. And that's the first step before talking with his mum, Veronique. That's going to be great, isn't it? Talks between United and Juve will continue through intermediaries also today. And the reason why my immediate reaction to the Rabio situation was negative is, uh, as James Horncastle describes here from The Athletic, the season has no sooner started and already Man United seem to be missing a France international midfielder they can all disagree over. Peace on the Rabio paradox and what United would be getting and the baggage that he comes with. And there's no doubt that there is a mercurial talent there underneath, but this is going to be a player. If he comes to Manchester United, 
that might be great one week, might disappear another week, and might get disciplined the next week. And I didn't want that sort of problem for Eric Ten Hag. But if Ten Hag here is going and he's speaking with him directly, and, and, and again, Ten Hag will probably feel I can coach him into being a better player than all these other managers have failed at. Rabio, I can understand a bit of logic behind. I still feel it's a bit of a somewhat of a panic, but maybe the Rabio situation is us executing a bit of a plan B for Frankie de Jong. But then again, when you take another step back and you look at this, right, this is Frankie de Jong's scouting report. We know where his strengths are. I've waxed lyrical about him all summer. And look at Rabio. And it's not hard to see that the profile of these two players is significantly different. Adrian Rabio is not a Frankie de Jong alternative. He is a midfield bolstering signing. Absolutely. He is not that playmaker from deep. He's somebody who can probably bring a bit more session and a bit more composure inside that area. But he's not the man who's going to start those attacks from deep. Hell, maybe we're going to see Lissandro Martinez get brought into midfield. And we didn't think we were going to see that. Or maybe we did. But Rabio, now that I can take a step back, I can see the merits of signing Rabio. I don't care what anybody says to me, honestly. I don't know how you can give me any merits for Arnautovic. I'm sure you will try in the comments, and some of you, um, some of you may. But they're two names, polar opposites of the end uh, of the scale in terms of how I think that Rabio could be part of some sort of strategy, even if I disagree with it. Arnautovic isn't. And then the next name on the list has come as a little bit of a surprise, and that's Sergei Milinkovic Savic. Now, this comes from Jason Burt from The Telegraph. I ran through this in my live stream this morning, and you know exactly who he is. Uh, he's saying that a fresh offer for an uh, Italy-based player... Sorry, no, my bad. Uh, Man United are considering a move to finally sign Lazio's Sergei Milinkovic-Savic. And you've got separate reports from Italy today that we're going to leave... With, I'm not going to put look, look too into these because they haven't been verified elsewhere. But they're saying that Man United are going to put in a 68 million euro offer for Milinkovic-Savic. Now, Milinkovic Savic, out of all these players we're getting linked with here, he's your elite, ready made, top level signing who can come in there and be a significant upgrade. Significant upgrade on Scott McTominay. You can see exactly where he would fit in the system. It would be maybe Ericsson and maybe Rabio going toe to toe in that deeper role with Fred there. Or maybe it's going to be Fred going behind Milinkovic Savic there and Bruno on the left hand side with Van der Beek. You can completely understand and see the logic behind that. And it's a signing that a lot of United fans would get behind. But again, timing. The timing, time, timing is the bit, is the buzzword here out of all of this. Milinkovic Savic, I think we had that conversation back in June as fans here on United People's TV. We had that conversation last year. Had the conversation probably the year before as well. That's a panic I can get behind because there's a logic behind it. I feel like there's a logic and a strategy. Well, maybe a strategy is the wrong word to describe what's behind that. But I could certainly support the idea. In the, uh, completely different in how I'm looking at that Arnautovic one. I'm looking at Milinkovic Savic going, yeah, I can see how and where that would improve United. And on top of all of that, you've got Rob Dawson from ESPN today saying the Manchester United have registered their interest in signing Cody Gakpo from PSV. And this is what the article said. Uh, Man United have registered their interest in signing Cody Gakpo. His representatives have been alerted to United's interest by the recruitment staff at Old Trafford, yet to submit a bid. Valued at £35 million by PSV. And, well, we all know full well that Eric Ten Hag knows Cody Gakpo. And that would kind of slot into the similar sort of signings that we've been making this summer. Those from the area Divisia, those who have links. Uh, well, yeah, Ten Hag knows exactly who he is. And Gapo's a good signing. I, 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 we spoke about him for a couple, a couple of weeks ago here on United People's TV. I could see and understand the logic of it. He plays off the left, but he can play across the front positions. He's physical. He can play with his back to goal. He would add to, and bring something into that attack, which it is currently lacking. And Rashford, he'd either have to buck up or he's going to get shifted out. This isn't a time to be sentimental with any more with any of these United players. They don't... They, they, they cannot be afforded that sort of leeway anymore. And Eric Ten Hag won't. So I want to know what you think about all of these in the comments below. Because we've got these three lads here. We've got Arnautovic, which I just can't for the life of me understand or get behind. Rabio, I can see some merits. I can see some log logic, even if I personally disagree with the idea that... 
signing a player like him and the baggage that comes with him is not something I want in and around the dressing room. Minikovic, Savage, just like when we've been linked with him before, he would be a good signing. And I can see positionally exactly where he'd fit in this Ten Hag system. And Cody Gakpo as well. Absolutely, I can see that. And he can play across the front position. So is Cody Gakpo the alternative to Anthony? You can let me know what you think. Is Rabio really going to be an alternative to Frankie de Jong? I'm completely unsure of that one. And Minikovic Savic, as I said, it's kind of a different player altogether to anything we've been linked with. In, not, in, not inside that position. I want to know from you whether you feel this is an overall sense of panic or whether you can see a semblance of a strategy here amongst it. And maybe it's just a coincidence this is all happening after Brighton. I don't think it's a coincidence it's happening after Brighton. I think we're definitely pulling the trigger, but it shouldn't take a defeat on the opening day of the season for United to act swiftly. Reactive instead of proactive. Been our biggest bugbear about United in the transfer market. But you let me know what you think about that in the comments below and whether or not you think that that would be a good triple signing for United and whether you think that Ten Hag would be happy with it. You let me know what you think in the comments below and make sure you subscribe as you always do. Well, maybe you don't, but you should.